Okay, so the topic of this video right here will be our sense of hearing. So let's go ahead and get started. Well, with our sense of hearing, let's first of all learn some of the anatomy of the ear. And it begins with our pinna, the fleshy outer part of the ear. And it acts as a funnel. So sound from our environment is funneled into our inner ear canal because of this fleshy flap of tissue called the pinna. And of course, people over the years have ceremonially de uh, decorated and adorned our pinna in a variety of ways with piercings and, and various uh, objects. But, you know, you ask yourself, you know, when we can't hear somebody talk, you know, we will often cup our hands behind our ears. Well, this actually helps to funnel even more sound into our ear canal so we can uh, hopefully hear what the person might be saying. So here we have a diagram and we've labeled now the pinna. Well, let's move inward. Into the ear canal we come to the eardrum. And what the eardrum does is it transfers sound from the air, from the environment, from uh, into the middle of our ear. Well, we're going to go inward further into this diagram. So just inward, more to the right, of the eardrum are these three very small bones, what are collectively known as the ossicles. We have the malleus, we have the incus, and we have the stapes. And these are very small bones. The stapes is no bigger than the size of a grain of rice. So three of some of the smaller bones in the body, and these are known as the ossicles. And what they help to do is they help to amplify sound in the process of us hearing. We'll talk more about this in a moment. So the next part of our anatomy I want to focus on is this curly, almost seashell-shaped bone inside of the inner ear called the cochlea. And like the notes say, inside of the cochlea, there are these mechanoreceptors that we call hair cells. Now mechanoreceptors detect pressure. And hair cells, they detect pressure, and, and the pressure that they detect is actually going to be interpreted as sound by our brain. And so it's these hair cells that are going to ultimately produce the impulses, the action potentials that will lead into our brain for us to hear sound. So let's go into this in a little more detail. Okay, so in sound transmission, let's say you're listening to some music. So the first thing that happens is sound waves, which are simply vibrations in the ear, are going to be funneled into your ear canal by your pinna. So we have sound waves have now entered our ear canal. And that's going to cause our eardrum to begin to vibrate. Now in my animation, I've, I've over-exaggerated, of course, the vibrating of the eardrum just so we can see it better in my animation. But the sound waves that enter our ear canal will cause our eardrum to vibrate. This causes those three bones collectively called the ossicles to vibrate, the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. So the vibrations of the eardrum are carried on to the ossicles, the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. And that vibration is then passed along to the cochlea, which is that curly shaped bone inside, uh, more internally located inside of our ear. And if you recall what we said earlier, what's inside of the cochlea is what's really special in this case. Because inside of the cochlea, the cochlea is not, uh, you know, empty and hollow. There is a fluid inside of the cochlea, and here we have a picture of some of those hairs that are sticking up from hair cells. These are actually, uh, actually cilia, which we learned way back earlier in the school year. Certain cells have little parts to, um, that stick out of them called cilia. And so here we have some, a grouping of hair cells, and you can see the cilia sticking out of them. And when the cochlea begins to vibrate, that causes the fluid inside of the cochlea to kind of rush over and slosh around a little bit, and that causes the cilia to bend. And it's that bending of the cilia of these hair cells that's going to trigger an action potential. So an impulse is then triggered once these hairs or these cilia on the hair cells begin to vibrate. And so now that the cochlea 
or I should say now that the hair cells located inside of the cochlea have uh, begun to bend, they've created action potentials and, or impulses. And you can see there's another part of the diagram that I've added a label to, and that's called the auditory nerve. This is the nerve where the impulse or the action potential will travel from the cochlea up the auditory nerve and directly into the brain. And of course it's your brain's job to then interpret this signal as sounds that we hear throughout our day. And there you go. There's a real quick overview of, you know, the general pathway and how we hear. So if you're in my class, you know, try to answer these questions. I'd hap I'm happy to check your answers before school or after school.